Now let's take a look at the cadaveric anatomy of the pectoral region. Let's begin with its surface anatomy. The clavicle, also known as the collarbone, is both visible and palpable along its entire length. Between the medial ends of the clavicles, you can locate the jugular notch, also called the suprasternal notch, which lies on the superior border of the manubrium of the sternum. The anterior part of the first rib is concealed beneath the medial portion of the clavicle. Now, if you trace your finger downward from the suprasternal notch along the midline, you'll feel a blunt transverse ridge about five centimeters below. This is the sternal angle, also known as the angle of Louis. This ridge marks the junction between the manubrium and the body of the sternum, and importantly, it corresponds to the articulation of the second costal cartilage with the sternum. From here, the other ribs can be identified by counting downward starting from the second. The costal cartilages of the seventh ribs form the subcostal margin. The nipple varies slightly in position even in males, but it is typically located in the fourth intercostal space, just medial to the midclavicular line the vertical line that passes through the center of the clavicle. Here we are looking at the dissected specimen of the pectoral region, where both the superficial and deep fasci have been carefully removed to display the muscles, along with the cutaneous nerves and vessels. The skin above a horizontal line drawn at the level of the sternal angle receives its sensory supply from the supraclavicular nerves, derived from C3 and C4 spinal segments. In contrast, the skin below this line is innervated by the anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of the second to sixth intercostal nerves, T2 to T6. Now let's identify the muscles visible in this view. One, pectoralis major. Two, deltoid. Third, serratus anterior. Fourth, external oblique. 5. Latissimus dorsi. Let's focus on the pectoralis major, the most prominent and largest muscle in this region. It is a broad, fan-shaped muscle that occupies much of the anterior chest wall. The pectoralis major arises from two distinct heads. 1. Clavicular head, originating from the medial half of the anterior surface of the clavicle. 2. Sternocostal head arising from the lateral half of the anterior surface of the sternum, the medial portions of the second to sixth costal cartilages, and also from the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle of the abdomen. The muscle fibers converge to form a flat tendon, which is inserted into the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. This tendon has two laminae. The anterior lamina is formed by the clavicular fibers and the posterior lamina is formed by the sternocostal fibers. These laminae are continuous inferiorly, and during their insertion, the fibers twist such that the lowest fibers attach at the highest point. This unique twisting of fibers gives rise to the rounded anterior axillary fold, a key surface landmark. Between the pectoralis major and the deltoid muscle, there is a shallow groove called the deltopectoral groove, which serves as the pathway for the cephalic vein. In this image, we can clearly observe the deltopectoral groove, the shallow depression located between the deltoid muscle and the pectoralis major. Within this groove, we can identify the cephalic vein, which is an important superficial vein of the upper limb. Alongside it, we can also appreciate the branches of the thoracoacromial artery, which arise from the second part of the axillary artery. These branches supply the pectoral and deltoid regions. Additionally, the acromion process and the clavicle are clearly visible, serving as key bony landmarks in this region. We can also note the presence of the deep fascia covering the anterior compartment of the arm providing a distinct boundary between the pectoral region and the upper limb. This image shows the same specimen we observed earlier, but here, a portion of the pectoralis major has been cut and reflected to expose the deeper structures beneath it. Most notably, 
The pectoralis minor. The pectoralis minor is a small triangular muscle situated deep to the pectoralis major. It takes its origin from the third, fourth, and fifth ribs near their costal cartilages, and its fibers converge upward and laterally to form a short, thick muscle that inserts onto the coracoid process of the scapula. In this view, you can also notice the lateral pectoral nerve running along with the branches of the thoracoacromial artery. Both structures pierce the clavopectoral fascia to supply mainly the pectoralis major muscle. The thoracoacromial artery, which arises from the second part of the axillary artery, typically divides into four branches, clavicular, acromial, pectoral, and deltoid, all of which can be appreciated in this region. We can also see the lower five digitations of the serratus anterior muscle. This muscle arises by eight finger-like digitations from the upper eight ribs. The first digitation arises from the first and second ribs, while the remaining digitations correspond to their respective ribs. Running along the lateral chest wall, we can clearly identify the long thoracic nerve, which supplies the serratus anterior muscle. Accompanying it are the lateral thoracic artery and vein, together referred to as the long thoracic vessels or external mammary vessels. Here, the vein drains into the axillary vein while the artery arises from the axillary artery. In this specimen, we are looking at a lateral dissection of the pectoral region, highlighting the serratus anterior muscle along with its associated neurovascular bundle. The long thoracic nerve is clearly visible running along the lateral chest wall, accompanied by the lateral thoracic artery and vein, forming the neurovascular bundle that supplies the serratus anterior. Notice the small nerve twigs passing through the serratus anterior. These are the lateral cutaneous branches of the intercostal nerves. They pierce the muscle to provide sensory innervation to the overlying skin. In this cadaveric image, the pectoralis major has been removed, leaving the pectoralis minor intact with its cut ends clearly visible. We can clearly see the cephalic vein, which is draining into the axillary vein, an important superficial vein in the upper limb. Also visible are the branches of the thoracoacromial artery, which supply the pectoral and deltoid regions, as well as the deltoid muscle itself. The axillary fat is also evident, filling the space around the neurovascular structures and providing a clear view of the vascular and muscular relationships in this region. In this dissection, the pectoralis minor has been cut and reflected to expose the axillary vessels. Here, the thoracodorsal artery is clearly visible. This is a terminal branch of the subscapular artery, which itself arises from the axillary artery. To fully expose the axillary neurovascular bundle, the pectoral muscles, axillary fat, and the anterior part of the deltoid have been removed, revealing the deeper structures. Along with the axillary vessels, several important nerves can be appreciated. The median nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, the thoracodorsal nerve running alongside the thoracodorsal artery. The long thoracic nerve, also known as the nerve of Bell. Additionally, the subclavius muscle is visible. This is a small triangular muscle situated between the clavicle and the first rib. Along with the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, the subclavius contributes to forming the anterior wall of the axilla, playing a role in stabilizing the clavicle and protecting underlying neurovascular structures.